Welcome to the TuckCast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasiji Fly Shop with locations in Bryson City and Silva, North Carolina. Be sure to follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasiji Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and YouTube at Tuckasiji Fly Shop for the latest information and instructional videos. Be sure to visit TuckFlyShop.com for all things fly fishing in Western North Carolina and beyond. Remember, the online store is always open. Here in our Silva Studios today, we have Coach Dell Diesel Collins. Bobby, the bearded wonder Bennett, and I'm your host, Shannon, Big Mess Messer. Thanks for listening to the Tuck Cast with a Splash of Bourbon, and let's get into today's crazy episode and see what kind of shenanigans the crew gets into. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Shannon, Welcome. Shannon's over there jamming on the air guitar. It's great. I, I don't know how to play the guitar, but I can play the air guitar. Your air guitar is fantastic. Sounds great. Always forget to do the... Uh, the upper hand, whether it be the net, is it, they call it the hand, net. That left hand's the, important. The left hand is probably it's, pretty important, right? It, it does a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing that Bobby knows how to play the guitar. A uh, little. There you go. Here little there. is more than I know how to play. <laughs> nice. All right, everybody. <laughs> welcome. Welcome into episode two, season two, episode two of 2021. Got a nice uh, episode here for you. Be sure to stick around to the end. We'll get in the uh, fly fishing report there for you right quick. And today's episode is going to be really focusing on some of the difficulty levels of some areas on the western Western North Carolina fly fishing trail. Only fly fishing trail in the country. That is correct. So uh, we're, we're going to work on that. And that basically is uh, what we're doing as far as a presentation tonight to Dale. Take it away, Carolina. Fly fishing club. I need some bourbon. <laughs> Y'all know it. Y'all know oh, I, I drink. forgot the mule stuff again this week. Y'all know Sorry. I drink bourbon before all those presentations. I forgot it. I, I was unaware of that. Oh, yeah. I is got a bottle in the back. I was unaware of that. I don't know. There's some wine. I was supposed to go to the ABC store today. There's is it still wine? open? What time's the ABC store closed? About 8 o'clock. It's, so. it, it's got to close when it's. They can't serve. You can't get alcohol after 9. So yeah. I'm guessing before 9 it closes. Mm-hmm. Get, trying yeah. to make a note. I gotta get a, yeah, I got to get a bottle for my, my buddy I'm going to see. I mean, you can hit one on the way, I'm sure. In Virginia, it's probably sold at the convenience know, man. Stores. They might have locked Virginia out. Like. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, right. Yeah, so talking about the uh, Western North Carolina fly fishing trail, you know, there's a lot of press out there about the trail, but, you know, it's just like, yeah, go fish Mall Creek. It's great. And then it's like you get there to Mall Creek, and let's say you're 75 with a couple hip replacements and, a, you know, titanium knee, and it's like, I don't want to fish Mall Creek. <laughs> so right. It's like... You know, let's let's talk about that and and you know clear up expectations and uh, talk about you know levels of difficulty. Yeah. So that's that's where we're gonna. I actually need to. I want to do this with a uh, trail map in front of me. I'll grab y'all some. Too. Sure. Let's that's fine. And I think the the point that that Dale brings up right there, it's a very valid point, uh, is the fact that you know some of these spots are going to be more <laughs> access friendly to folks with. Um, with maybe some lesser agility than we have when we're younger, then you get somewhere and you can't make it in into the water, of course. And yeah. and that's something that it's not really clearly marked on the trail map itself. And uh, listening to this and stuff here is greatly going to help uh, improve that. So when you come here, you're informed. You know, you have a plan. Or you got a two-wheel drive Kia and you ain't going to get there. That's the other thing, too. Is, that's correct. Absolutely yeah, some correct. Some getting there, yeah. Mm-hmm. The other thing you have to think about the time of the year you're fishing, as yes. far as growth, um, vegetation, uh, the type of wildlife you may encounter, whether it's reptilian or, or bees reptilian. or things. Reptilian. Sure. Mm. That's a word, correct? Well, I guess. I, I, I just made now. it up. Sounds I just good. made it up. Sounds great. So uh, so that's kind of the emphasis of this, here, of this podcast here is to try to educate you on some of those things. You can't share my screen, can you, Bobby? Uh, no. Yeah. I could share the desktop, but not the iPad. Because I was like, man, I don't know. That's your camera, so don't do anything with Let's it. see some of the stuff. Yep. And be sure to stick around for a, uh, for a report here that. at the end. So. What? Yeah. So, um. It would be on your phone, wouldn't it? Couldn't you? I'm, yeah, but I could airdrop it, but I have to get out of the screen yeah, share. Oh, oh. don't do that. Yeah. So. All right. Let's just roll from the top. All right. So, from the top. So, we're looking at, if, if you folks at home or, um. If if you're if you're getting some windshield time, you know we're we're gonna 
try to get something up with some better visuals uh, with, for with the presentation with the Carolina Fly Fishing Club tonight. We'll get that video up on YouTube um, in a separate um, separate thing. But you know, we're certainly got more dialogue here than we'll probably have tonight. As we'll have a lot of Q and A uh, with the good fight. They got thirty people registered for that thing already. Excellent. Sweet. So, um, so yeah, that that's a good crowd for a remote um, presentation. So, uh, you know. Number one, Scott Creek. So um, we do have on our web store a map of Scott's Creek, or Scott Creek, with um, with parking access, fishing points, um, and things like that. Uh, it's ninety nine cents. You get a PDF, and it's it's made by us. It's not just something we found on the web. It, it's made by uh, Tuck Fly Shop. I think Jack actually worked a lot on that one. Maybe you too, Bobby. I'm not sure, but. Um, so yeah, go check out tuckflyshop.com, go to the online store, look at maps and I don't know, it's in the map section and we've got one for the Akuna Lefty, um, uh, for the tribal waters, uh, both section, both delayed harvest of the tuck, but Scott's Creek is on there too. So, um, you know, Scott's Creek is one of those, it's kind of a year round Creek. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it, the water originates from Woodfin Creek, Dark Ridge, Jones Creek up near the Blue Ridge Parkway comes together and those you could jump across i mean i don't think they're really nothing worth naming for fishing purposes but um per se uh so scott's creek you know the water's gonna be cold obviously the further into the valley further into sylvan dillsboro let's say it's august and september that water is going to get uh, in the afternoons in the 70s so you want to make sure in the mornings you're um you're out there and not in the afternoon in the valley, but certainly in the shadier spots further upstream, that water is going to stay cold in the summer. Um, but you know, the inverse now in the winter, so it's going to warm up as it comes down the mountain, but keep in mind that water is coming uh, from higher elevation. So it's going to be cold. So, and it, it flash floods quick. We've learned. Yeah, it, it, it does. It goes up fast. It yeah. goes up fast. And, and a lot of times it can go down quick too. That's right. In the yeah. Summer months, not as much this time of year, but right. it, but it gets up high. It, and we've yeah. talked about too, like it, you get a little tinge to it, we think it fishes better. In some cases, totally agree with that. Yeah. So we don't we don't want to see Scotts Creek if we're fishing it, we don't want to see Scotts Creek perfectly clear. But for access, you know, in the valley, like down in Silva, you know, it runs right through downtown. So there's lots of access points that are fairly easy. I mean, you can drop down from Nana La Brewery and fish it. Um, but the further you go upstream, the steeper the bank gets. So uh, the slope increase is obviously going up into the mountains, and there's a gorge section. It's tough. Difficult. Like, I, I've taken, I think, two trips where we actually dropped down into the gorge and stayed into the gorge until we couldn't fish anymore because it just got too too much white water and too steep on each side. Um, so uh, we had to basically, you know, crawl our way out of it. Um, but the fishing was was really good. So. You know, know your limits. I, I guess that's going to be the biggest thing, you know, the takeaway for today is know your limits because, you know, I think the, you know, a couple of those guys were in their 40s or 50s. And, I mean, I'm sure they were sore by, you know, the next day. Um, but it, it, it was worth it. So, but don't go down there alone um, in, in the gorge section. You can fish Scott's Creek any other place by yourself any time, any time of the year. Uh, but that gorge section you want to definitely uh, be careful with. Another thing about Scott's Creek, um, keep in mind this this creek has got probably 150 years of European civilization on it. I mean, how sure. long people been here? I don't, I don't, yeah. Not I don't Native know. Americans. I don't know. So I mean, you're going to see debris in the creek. <laughs> this is what I'm getting at. You're gonna, like it, it can be trash. There, yeah. There's going to be pieces of concrete with rebar sticking out. Yeah, there. yeah. some metal. Yeah, watch um, where you're wading. Don't cut your waders up and stuff or get tetanus. You know, the Tuck TU um, and, uh, started to clean up on Scott's Creek a few years back, and uh, some other groups have jumped in there to help. We've gotten 12, 12 uh, tons of trash out of that creek in three cleanup days, totaling about nine hours worth of work. Yeah. So it can be a trashy place, but, you know, if, if everybody tries to take care of it, uh, you'll certainly see more of that in the wintertime than the summer because the vegetation covers a lot of that stuff. But um, but just under, take it take it for what it is. I mean, it's a creek going through settled areas. There's going to yeah. be trash in there. And, so. and, and let me kind of clear that up a little bit. You're, you're not fishing ah, in a... Clear it up. You're not fishing... Ah, you're, 
you're not fishing in a landfill either. Right. Yeah. There's some very, very pretty places on Scott's Creek. Um, but as you go through the town, which there's some really good access as far as going through downtown Silva, you're going to yeah. see the back of business buildings and, and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, if you access it down around Monteith Farm Park, and Dale might be getting ready to hit on this, there's a nice trail that goes through there. They're currently <clears throat> is, they're um, working on the new bridge project, so you're going to have some cranes and stuff in the background, but access is easy, and it fishes. Same thing in Dillsboro, down at the Dillsboro River Park area, where it flows into the Tuckasegee. You got that whole area once again. Yeah, super you're, easy. You're, you're in town. Access is easy, and it fishes. Um so there's a little give and take when you yep. get in those places. So you're going to see a little bit more things you wouldn't normally see that if you were out into the gorge, where the gorge is. There's some water in Scotts Creek that I would put up against anything in the national park in some days. There's oh, some yeah. there's some pretty water out yeah, there. Yeah, and the wild fish, you know. Good biomass. Browns. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. we've, we've seen some spectacular browns come out yes, of there. Yes, we it's, have. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of years ago, uh, Chris Maney, when was he was with us, um, he put a guy, his first – Fly fishing trip. It was a summer trip. We get a lot of that. Um, 24 inch brown. There you go. And he looked as stream born as could be. And I don't think that kid's fly fish since probably. I mean, why would you? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah. He had that green jacket on. Yeah. I mean, and it wasn't, it wasn't the, the Augusta green jacket. This thing was. No, no, it was, it was green. like a runner's jacket. Um, it was. It was <laughs> but, perfect. you know, and that maybe the water that day was a little colored up. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Um, perfect. Cool. Well, shall we move on? Scott's Creek. I think down. we should. Yeah, absolutely. Since so many other ones. Um. So we'll just go down number two. Small streams. Uh, Moses Creek. Mole Creek. <laughs> yeah. So those. those <laughs> <laughs> something happened to the audio on those last three. I don't know what. But um. You know these are these are those headwaters of um. Caney Fork, uh, coming down off the Blue Ridge Parkway. So, and these are the highest. It's coming off of like Richland Balsam. So. This is the highest points of the entire Blue Ridge Parkway. So we're talking this water is originating from 6,000 feet. And uh, so this time of year is pretty cold. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And it's also, these are the places you want to make sure you have a capable four-wheel drive. Now, I'm not talking about all-wheel drive. Correct. I'm talking lock the differential, and we got to go up the mountain. Go have some fun. Go have some fun. Right. Um, You need to know the capabilities of your four-wheel drive. Um. And you know, take a tow rope. It don't, don't take your brand new 2021 out there, and, and if if you're not willing, it's to, a 2020 uh, forerunner is going to go. Let's, 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 let's really make sure here. Everybody yeah. gets those Broncos; they're going to be back there. Right? <laughs> they're going to be like, let's take it. Let's they try. It. It. it was raised well, by goats. That's right. It's raised by goats. Well, here's one thing to keep in mind: you better have a way to get yourself out because there yes. ain't no sell service back in there. Absolutely. There ain't Correct. no five G on Caney for. I'll come help you. Five hundred dollars an hour. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let yeah. believe that. Yeah. You know what it is? You get stuck on the beach out of the Outer Banks. It's now, probably super expensive. Now, 12 years ago, not when I got stuck. I've never been stuck. Let me just say that. Um, we've seen some people get stuck. We talked to the record service um, <laughs> at the time. Like, hey, man, just in case I do this too, what you cost? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was 275 bucks, and that was in 2009. That's not that bad. I think at Fort Fisher it was like 250 this year. Yeah, so it's it had to have gone up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Terrible. Yeah. So. But with that being said, it is remote, which means that it's the fishing pressure is is relatively light. Mm-hmm. It's going to be smaller stuff. Yeah, and and with that, that means that accessing it physically is going to be more difficult that's than right. Monteith Farm Park. Yeah, that that's the place where you don't want to go down there. Um, in, in you know, a couple busted up knees and hips. You yeah. want to be very careful. Yeah. Know your physical um, limits. Take a first aid kit too. Yes. Um, in the summer, it's going to be snaky. And uh, in the wintertime, you know, it's going to be snaky, pretty bad fishing. <laughs> so it's going to be. They're just sleeping. Well, and, you know. We get some warm days. Yeah, you, you look yeah. at our social media. There's yeah. a picture of uh, Shannon. You were guiding a trip up there, and there's a bear dog sitting on your client's foot. Oh, yeah. That's all right. So, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. You want to tell us about that a little bit? About the, about the dog? Yeah. About the bear dog coming to see you? No, man. We just. We just fishing up through there, and I seen uh, these two like, like walkers or, or plots. I can't recall now, but coming down the trail, and they had their collars on. And uh, one of them obviously was wanting to go hunt, and that one there didn't want to have anything to do with it. <laughs> he was like, "Let's watch these guys." He fish. just, yeah. he just, he basically followed us, and he he got down into the creek, and <clears throat> and, and and his boot was on a rock, 
and that dog positioned himself to where he sat down in the creek, but where he was not getting wet. Mm-hmm. I mean, you couldn't have done it any better. Yeah. Dog would just turn and look at you. And the other dog would be up there on, on the old roadbed and was barking at it, like, let's go, let's go, let's yeah. go. <laughs> and then I seen the owner coming with his tracker, and I said, well, your other one's over over here sitting in the, on the yeah. guy's foot in the creek. And he's like, oh, gosh. So, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, but it, you know, well, that's a cool experience. On it, that it was. It was. It was. It was funny. It's just one of those things you you kind of won't forget. But uh, yeah. Well, and that's the, you know that's one of those places where you know I tell people that you know they 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 want to go fish for wild fish. They think Great Smoky Mountain National Park. No. And I think the stuff Jackson County's got might be better. Maybe I'm going to ruin it by saying that, but. Mm. Let's just say here, there's quick access to wild fish here, R- really quick. Yeah. I, think, I think it's more that people just know about the national park. So yeah, the park yeah, just draws people in. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think yep. that's what's so unique about this county mm-hmm. is that there's a lot of opportunities that are relatively close time wise to town if yeah. you're willing to put in the effort. That's right. If you're willing, and, and we're not talking Tuckasegee, we're we're talking wild fish out out in the woods. Hey, real quick, man, this right here. Yeah. I keep like listening to you talk, and I think that's what's on my camera thing. So I'm, I'm thinking I've got the camera on you, and then I'm like, oh no, it's Dale. Oh, I got <laughs> I you. Man, you kind of look like popcorn Sutton in that one screen, man. The way you. <laughs> yeah, Shannon got a new camera, man. Black out so. a few of them teeth, and you got it covered. <laughs> what are you trying to say? We'll go get you some of those Bubba teeth. He's things. a popular feller. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's making more money dead than he was alive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know. Poor feller. <laughs> oh, well. well What's perfect. the next one? Uh, well, you know, Caney Fork. So that's an interesting one. Um, all the streams we were just talking about, uh, they all feed down into Caney Fork. Mm-hmm. And um, so Caney Fork has got a lot going against it right now. Yes. Um, it's on this fly fishing trail. At the time when the fly fishing trail was made, all of Caney Fork was considered hatchery supported, and that has changed tremendously since the printing of this. And they might want to go and update it. There is no longer any hatchery supported sections on Caney Fork, which is fantastic. Because honestly, it's a phenomenal stream. Uh, it fishes fantastic. It's full of wild fish. You got browns, you got rainbows, and then the brookies will get uh, after a, a hard rain will get washed down in there. So you got a chance to get the the slam in there. You can even get some smallmouth in there down the lower stretches towards the tuck. Um, and then the the red horse, you know, some of those other you know, be, uh, f- small fish. Um, unfortunately, there's more and more posted signs going up. Yeah, Every time you see access a, is getting tough. You see a for sale sign in the yard, and then about three months later, you see a posted sign. So as, as Caney Fork becomes more of a... Um, it's kind I of guess a community. Were, well, there. it's a yeah. It's a, I yeah, mean, it's a community. people are proud. I mean, yeah. the people from Caney Fork. I mean, Stacy will tell you, teaching at the high school, that you ain't from you ain't from Silva, you ain't from Cullowee, you from Caney Fork. Yeah. And um, I, I think in in fifteen years you won't you won't hear that. I, yeah. I think it's going to be sold out. Sure. Unfortunately. Yeah. Real pretty valley. Real, real pretty land up through there. Judah, Judicola Rock. If oh, I'm pronouncing yeah. that correctly, go check, out yeah, go check yeah, that out right. there. That's very cool. And Google uh, it if mm-hmm. you can spell it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Native. They, those those drawings predate the Cherokee. They're like ten thousand years. Yes, old. it was actually on that uh, that TV ancient, show. Ancient aliens. Uh, yeah, that guy came here in the show, yeah. and, and uh, yeah, so kind of neat to neat That's to awesome. see that. Mm-hmm. Um, so beautiful area. Access is sketchy. Mm-hmm. If you don't know it, just be cautious of that. Yeah. And we're, uh, but it is on the trail map. It is a viable fishery. Respect the private. Just property. respect, and and I know that fly fishing people pick up behind themselves. But if you see something, carry it out to you. Mm-hmm. you know, that, that goes a long way. Is making sure that we do get access to those places. All right, number five, Panther Town Creek. Um, so Panther Town's an interesting place. They call this the Grand Canyon of the East. I thought it was Yosemite of the Yosemite South. Yosemite of the South. Of the South. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's Grand Canyon of the East in my presentation. Grand Canyon <laughs> of the East is uh, up there in New York. Oh, in the Whites? Oh, uh, what's the nice name of that? Hampshire. What's the name of that canyon? I've been to it. Delaware like, Water Gap? No, it's up by the Finger Lakes, or on your way to the Finger Lakes. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a huge canyon. Yosemite cool. of the South. I got to remember that. I knew it was something big. Yeah, Yosemite well, of the South. So, anyway, Panther Town. It's interesting. So... There is it's probably the most hiked trails in Jackson County. 
in terms of foot traffic. Um, gorgeous scenery, great, great views. Uh, you're walking out on, you know, big rocks, um, looking down in, into, to the valley. Um, but the Creek, these, these Creek, the Creek or creeks in there, that's the headwaters of the tuck, uh, I guess on the East Fork side. Is that right? Wouldn't be the West Fork. Sounds good. Yeah. Sure. So, um, you know, the problem with Panther Town, it's getting overgrown. The rhododendron is really starting to cover. Yeah, it the can creek. be tight. It, it's tight it's fishing up through that whole section. Basically, the only places you can fish are the waterfalls. Yes. Yeah. You got Schoolhouse Falls, you got Granterboro Falls, and you're going to have to hike into them. Uh, Schoolhouse Falls, I think, is uh, two miles round trip. So a mile down and a mile out up. And, um, and and you got to understand that if you're there in the the warm months, that's just, those are swimming holes. Yes. So you can get there in the morning and, and probably you know fish, but there's a good chance somebody might have beat you to it. Yeah. You and, know, so. and quite a bit of camping goes on in there. A lot, as well. of, a lot of camping, and the trails aren't marked very well. Man. Easy to get lost in there. Stacy and yeah. I, the kids did. We we went for a three mile hike. It turned into five and a half, six, and we daylight was running out. Like we did that at uh, Hanging Rock once. Well, <laughs> we did like a supposed to be a two mile hike. It turned out eleven. Mm. Well, like, there's a lot difference. of trails, and they're only numbered. Yeah, and um, I don't know. I feel like the National Forest Service has got to do a better job of of directionally pointing things the right way. Yeah, you know, like when you make a when you make a north turn, you know, where are you at now? Yeah. What trail number you on? So, yep. uh, be careful with that one, but just understand your your fishing opportunities are pretty much limited to the waterfalls. So, um, but there's some beautiful brook trout in there for sure. Hey, real quick, the Grand Canyon of the East, Letchworth State Park in New York, beautiful, very beautiful. Go check that cool. out if you're ever up there. That's it right there. Look at that. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah it's it's pretty it's a pretty spectacular yeah. place. Yeah. 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 That train good. trestle and all the waterfalls. Um, anyway, you know, number six is Raven Fork, the trophy water over in Cherokee. Um, you know, it, it's Cherokee, it's yeah. trophy water. No tournament this year. That's right. Yeah, they sent out the list of tournaments, and it's pretty much just all the tag tournaments. Yes. Yeah. And some campground, it's a private KOA is going to have a tournament, and Indian Creek Campground tentatively is. But uh, yes, that's one thing that we noticed on the list we got this week. That's right. Was that that's big news? There was no rumble in the rhododendron for. 2021. They didn't do it this past year. They didn't do it this past year well, and not uh, showing again for this coming, the year we're in, so the upcoming. No, one. they did it in 2019. No, 2020, past year. That last year, they didn't That's do right, it. we did pass they, November again. That's right, yes. <laughs> yes, Man. absolutely. So just well, be that's, aware that's of that. kind of like a given that they were going to cancel that one. Yeah. I think so. I'm oh. surprised about this year, though. Yes, yeah, I am too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I kind of thought the 2021 one would be on because of the vaccine and stuff. But anyways. That's yeah. usually when they stock it. And well, if that's you what I'll we'll say it. about the Raven Fork is uh, the rum- the rumble in the rhododendron is off. Yeah, so, according to the email we got from the truck, it gets it gets a lot of pressure too. Yeah, especially it does. Um, and and it's an extra fee. Like you got to pay the. Yeah. Like if the you want to go fish one day, it's going to be thirty five bucks for the permit. Um, we, I'll say this: we do not enjoy guiding there. On the trophy water. It's kind of like you're guessing every time you go. You're well, like, you don't know how busy it's going to be. That's it. And, and, and you might find somebody that's going to stay in a hole for four hours. That's right. The, the one thing or, that... Or, let me say this real go quick. Ahead. You might be out there in May, and the PE class comes out from the high school, Cherokee Besides High School, and does some cannonballs, right, where you're yeah. fishing. Mm-hmm. No, like, total True. disregard of what you're right. do, doing there. And, and, the, and the other thing, and, and not to not to beat a dead horse, beautiful water, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I grew up fishing elk. as a kid. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. water. You get to see the elk usually, all that. I mean, Absolutely. It's beautiful. I, I could only imagine if it was just non-commercialized what it would be. Yeah. Like. yeah. It could be the most spectacular fishery in the national park if it was national park land. But another, another the, the one thing that we hear when folks come into the shop. Yeah. Is I'm out there fishing and here come 37 yellow inner tubes. Yeah, during the summer, especially. in the yeah. summer months, you have to be aware of that. Yeah, you're not too, but you're not just because you see a billboard on uh, 85 or whatever in Atlanta does not mean that when you get up here, it's going to be like that. Well, yeah. it's different tubing than what you experience on Deep Creek. Totally different tubing. It's like Lazy River tubing. Yes, and it, in the summer, that that section can have some of the 
most amazing terrestrial fishing in the southeast. Yes. Like, it's like fishing Montana good mm-hmm. as far as the hoppers go, yes. the hopper bite. But, yeah, when, when uh, you know, when Bo Duke comes through drunk on a tire tube, tractor trailer tube. Bo Duke. And not all tubers are drunk. Let's just clarify that. There's some right. great, great people out there, but we're just biased but, for But just group. be, just be, just understand that that's what you're going to deal with. Yeah, in the I, summer, I, I would summer. like to see some concessions made. Hopefully, the tribe would consider maybe limiting the tubing below that area and make it a true <laughs> yeah. thing there. But those are some things we hear from customers, and and we've experienced. You know, I think just nine so you people know. drowned in Cherokee in 2020. There, oh there gosh. was a lot. There was a lot of. Like issues. in in mm-hmm. a kind of left in Ravens. Just playing in the water. Just playing in yeah. the water. Yes, play, play, playing in the water. Absolutely. It's, yeah, you got to respect yeah. it. So just just yeah, just be aware. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Just, yeah. You got a button for that one yet? <laughs> no, we we do, but that's yeah. Um, mm-hmm. moving right number along. Seven. Number seven. Yeah. Um, don't go fish this one either. <laughs> just kidding. But you probably need to have some rock climbing skills. No. Um. Whitewater River in the southern end of Jackson County, it is a gorgeous place. Um, if if you're, again, know your limitations, um, it's worth seeing. Um, I've never actually, like, went down and hiked it or fished it. I went there in college. I've never, I've never um, been down in there. It's gorgeous. I got a picture I mean, it's of... It's kind uh, of a gorge type thing, too, isn't it? Sort of, kind of. It is, yeah. And then, then it drops. Yeah. Well, four, I mean, that white... The, the 411 foot. Yeah, the, the waterfall is spectacular, if you've ever seen yes. the pictures. I it's, uh, what, the highest waterfall east of the Mississippi River? Uh, Probably east of the Rockies. That's what it says I here. One, I just I read it. I thought the one... It, oh, is it? I just read well, it. Okay, I was about to say... no waterfalls... On the Mississippi. I thought the one on the... At, it says it here, it Blowing says, well, maybe Not here it says, Rock. noteworthy, flows into White Waterfalls, the highest waterfall east of the Mississippi. Okay, there you go. I'm just reading what's printed. That's cool. I know, I'm just thinking about, like, what other waterfalls are there up until the Rockies? I don't like, know. No. So you can say, mm. highest waterfall east of the Rockies. If you're in Livingston, Idaho, let us know. I'm sure they'll know. Just say it. Livingston, Idaho, let us know. But why. they're on the west side of the Rockies. Uh, they might have knowledge out there. <laughs> We're moving along from Paducah, Kentucky to Idaho. Paducah. I forgot about Paducah. Uh, It's 2021. We'll hit another place. (laughs) So the Whitewater River, you know, it's it's from my understanding, it's mostly brown trout. Um, You know, uh, and they're wild. They're beautiful fish and nothing, nothing, it's not like a trophy brown trout fishery, but it's going to be a small creek, um, slick rocks, and it's not like, it's like bedrock. I mean, it's not like you're standing on cobble. You're standing on like straight up bedrock that is a sheet of granite that just goes for 100 yards. Oh, Red Flintstone. Yeah. So, oh, but cool. beautiful place. Um, gotcha. So, definitely worth checking out um, uh, at some point. You got Scotsman's, Fowler, and Whitewater all there together. Yeah, they're kind of in the same area. Right? And there's a few others not mentioned on here. Um, was that the Taylor? There's a Taylor there. Um, I believe, and it's it's pretty cool too. Not that to be confused may, with the Taylor out west. Well, that's right, but it may be on the other side of the the. It may be in Macon County, closer to Highlands. Yeah, but it's the same type of situation. So, and you're on the south side of the county there, so all that water is going to flow to the Atlantic. Flows into uh, South Carolina. Continental, I wonder, I wonder Continental why they divide. didn't put the the Chattug on there, the Chattuga. It used to be. Well, yeah, it is on there. It's on there, but it's not in not the list. highlighted. Yeah, it's not yeah. highlighted in the list. It used to be on the one before this one. It yeah. was. I wonder why they hear the banjo on. music, baby. So, oh, well. um, so mm-hmm. we covered eight. Um, West nine. Fork of the Tuckasegee. Yeah. So the lower stretches. You know, I think in, in my presentation that I want to go over tonight, I've, I've said it, it can be decent. Uh, when you get up towards uh, Cullaway Falls, you know, I think you. Um, I, you know, the summer it gets warm, uh, and you got it. You got a reservoir in there too. You, you got Thorpe, Thorpe Reservoir. That's that's where you know when they open up the West Fork. That's where that water comes from. So um, you know, be careful below that. Obviously, above that, you've got to deal with six recreational releases a year, um, and that's pretty spectacular to see. Bryson and I hiked that. Yeah, you go see the fall, and it is like they call that. I think I'm right on this. The Niagara Falls of the South. Where do you where do you park to go see that? I've never done it. It's tricky, and it's all private property. So tricky. Yeah. Um. There's a little right, little like you going up towards Cashers. Uh. There's a little road called Shoal Creek Road, mm-hmm. and there's two Shoal Creeks. Oh boy. Within the same zip code, so you gotta be careful. Oh boy. So, I think one Shoal Creek goes up 281. I'll figure it right? out. Right. 
One day I'll go. It's on the right. The There's wrong really... shoal creek is on the left. Yeah. That's Shook Cove. Shook Cove. That's Shook. It. Yeah. Shook Cove, not Shoal Creek? Not Shoal Creek. Man, I'd have been lost. No, no, no. You want to go on Shoal no, Creek. No, you want to oh. go. The other one on 281. Yeah, other, yeah that oh, Okay, okay. Shook. Yeah. yeah. I was getting my SCs confused. <laughs> SC school. They both were SCs. S-C-H-O-O-L. So. Cool school. All right. Cool. Nice. Cool. Well, that's good. Moving West right Fort. along. So... Tuckasegee River, East LaPorte. Now, it's interesting fishing at East LaPorte. So, you got a confluence there where the Caney Fork comes into the tuck. You can catch all kinds of stuff there. Bass, uh, obviously some nice browns. So, um, but yeah, a couple people are drowned there. Yes. A couple kids from mm. college, I think. College. So, yes. the college yes. likes to come down there. They'll use the uh, sand volleyball courts and picnic tables and whatnot and shelter. Um, so, obviously, it can be crowded. Um, but it's um, it's definitely it's pretty. It's but. open if you want to practice casting. You got a lot of greenway That's out right. there to do that, and you can fish access caney and stuff and high yeah. water. Maybe and kind of note in high water, you don't have to get in the water to fish through there. That's true. Yeah, you can sit there. It's an the option. Yeah, switch your spay. Um, also, that that's that's hatchery supported. Um, but you know, it's not going to be delayed harvest or anything, so your fish distribution is a lot thinner. Yep. 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 Um, Savannah Creek. Now that's an interesting one. That's one that I think has a lot of potential, but it's starting to get more and more overgrown too. Um, rhododendron is really growing into the creek. It gets really silted up easy. It seems well, like well, there's fa- big farms on it. Yeah. yeah, there's there's one spot though behind the substation down to that stretch mm-hmm. that just looks yeah. like yeah, the Reinhardt right Farm. I, I would not do it in the summer, but this time of year would be the time to kind of climb down some of those places yeah. to to see what's there. Yeah. I think Casey has. I, th- I think Casey has explored that area again through there, but yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, there, there's parking areas, but you know, they're right next to that white line. Mm-hmm. Um, very tight, very tight. And I, I don't really see any way to get down to the creek yeah. from the parking area. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind it's, of like a slide down. It's a slide. Down. Well, yeah. yeah, but you're going to slide through rhododendron. Yeah, it's, it's so now you're talking yeah. breaking a rod, maybe you know, yeah. breaking a net. Mm-hmm. So definitely be careful there. But it's it's definitely problematic. But yeah, if there's if it drizzles, that thing turns to mud. It does. And it's unfortunate. And along you know, Highway 441, most of that's private. So you, yeah. you, you're you not. There's a, isn't there a, an RV campground on Savannah? There Somewhere? is now. Yeah, I thought there was. Up, up, it's mm-hmm. further upstream. Yep. That is correct. Mm-hmm. So. You got what? You got Fort Tatham up through there, and then you've got another is one. Is it up Tatham there. or Tatum? I don't know who um, Tatham? I guess it's Tatham. Close I just enough. feel like I'm, I got a lisp. Man, we, we got pronunciation problem. Stop you it. Know, you know, old, old, old Estes asked me today how to say Asplant, the tree company, and I was like, I, I've always said Asplant, and he's like, I think that's what it is. He's like, I'm always scared to say it. I always say Aspalun. And, and I said, it's one of those words that you go, Aspalun, and just <laughs> let everybody think. They I don't just like them Aspalun. creeks up at the head of Candy yeah. Court. Mm-hmm. Aspalun. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so the Tuck DH, obviously that's going to be your, yes, that's your easy Bread Fun, and come out and play, learn, uh, challenge yourself on some new fishing techniques, and um, yeah, yeah, it's easy waiting. That's the one that's well known for the most part, you know. And you, you know, obviously pay attention to what Duke Energy is doing, and we've been over that. Before. Most importantly, pay, and it offers you opportunities to try some things you've never done before, yeah. such as two hand spay casting, things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yep, yep, um, yep. And you know, you're going to see some tubing there in the summer, but you're also you don't really need to be fly fishing there in the summer. But I will say, Bobby and I, I mean, we fish there, and you probably have too, Shannon. You get out there in a June or July evening when the water's cooled. There's fish. Right There's before species, sunset, species. man, they oh, yeah. are sipping caddis like mm-hmm. crazy. Oh, yeah. in Right there in it, Dillard Road. I, I, I've said it. I've, I've preached it till I'm blue in the face, man. There's some really good dry fly fishing on the Tuckasegee at certain times. Mm-hmm. And most people never experience That's it. That's right. That's right. Never experienced it. Um, Greens Creek, uh, again, kind of like Caney Fork. Lots more posted signs going up. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of Caney Fork Savannah-esque, kind of that same. Yeah. yeah, but you could jump across it. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it's definitely yeah. tinier. I, I think if if I was a kid and lived there, I'm I'm oh, I'm, I'm busting that bad boy. You That's know right. what I'm it's saying? Like Dix Creek. I kind of think it's one of those type things. It, yeah. Y- yeah. Um, th- so the Tuck River, number 14 in Dillsboro. This is an instrument. This, one run- this section runs from Dillsboro down to Barker's Creek and – um, in the summer, this is certainly whitewater traffic. Yep. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, in the summer is the best time to fish that, I think. Um, you get your red-eye bass, your rock bass. Uh, obviously, there's some smallmouth in there. Um, but you you get – yeah, they do stock that. Um, 
And you so, probably get some that get kicked out of the DH, right. get blown that's down. It. So you got pretty decent fish distribution through there, but the only problem is the only way you get in through there is on a boat. Yeah. Uh, now, you can, and in the presentation, there's a picture of Shannon holding a really beautiful brown. Um, he'd either been there a while or he was wild um, right behind the Best Western. Yep. So even if you're not staying at the Best Western, you go down there and park at the Best Western, I believe. Um <laughs> And you can... Uh, we did. Next weekend, there's going to be 20 cars parked down there at the Best West. Uh, this podcast ain't that popular yet. <laughs> well, so... Um, but yeah, you can go out there and fish. I yes. mean, Shannon and I did. We were staying yeah, there. Yeah. We parked there. And we I've, I've done it. I think yeah. everybody that was yeah. down here probably has. Um, so, uh, yeah, the the Dillsboro Inn, that section right there, it's hatchery supported, but running up to the, the old dam there that they blew up, there's there's a ton of fish in there. There is. Mm-hmm. And it hey. only gets fished by the the... the Worm dippers. And then once again, right there by by Dillsbury River Park. And, and my son Braden loves it. Mm-hmm. He can Tanya will take him down there. He'll stand on the bank, like you said, but yeah. he's throwing artificial stuff and he's just ripping lips. He he is literally <laughs> what you said, ripping lists with all different species. Yeah. yeah. And he, he just loves it. It's yeah. fishing, man. It's a kid fishing. That's all you want to do. And there's some tables down there too. That's right. Um uh, so uh, so if you want to But I believe that the rapids down there, you got split rock. Paramount Rock. My oh. my son's getting into kayaking. There's mm. some serious like class two. Yeah, there's some three. Good, well, I they kind of call it though. The the advertising is mom approved no. rafting. No, but I I would never let my kid go down there in an inner tube. No. Well, I don't. I I've he never gone down rafting, it. I said mom tubing. approved rafting. I yeah. thought it used to say tubing. They do some tubing over there. Yeah, but do they do it on the flow based on what the schedule is? Man, I, I was a nervous wreck with Bryson going down that thing in a kayak. Was it? Yeah, and he he sure enough finally flipped over, but he he handled it. There you go. Nine years old, they can handle more Pe- than we realize. People go down that thing on a paddleboard. Yeah, that's you do see it's people crazy. on the paddleboard, man. I see people in inner tubes. I'm I like, y'all are crazy. But yeah, the paddleboard, I see it all because I go right by I, it at the end. With maybe. the inner tubes in whitewater, it's it's not drowning. I'm afraid of of it's falling. Rock. It's hitting your head on a rock and then because, drowning and then drowning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> even I mean, even if you got a PFD on, if your face is in the water and you ain't awake, you're going yeah, down. Correct. Point blank period. Yep. Very, very valid point. So Yeah, just be cautious. Very, very safe. So yeah, um uh, number fifteen, lower Tuckasee G River, Barker's Creek Bridge to Whittier. That's basically a Duke Energy ramp to a Duke Energy ramp. Um, you know, it, it's it's a summer slow now this is a this is a slow float. Yeah. It we, is. We've we've guided this in the summer sun. And this it is actually really decent smallmouth fishing for around here. Um, like I think it, in my opinion, rivals that of Little Tennessee. Um, and you, every now and then you'll find a trout. Um, but yeah, it's it's it can be fun. Goes so, through some farm type not of and stuff like that. Not going to be able to pull off in part because it's right on the side of a highway four lane. Um, so you, you're going to want to you know bring a canoe or bring a raft. Mm-hmm. Float it. I, yeah. I don't recommend the hard boat. There's some, there's just some weird um, rock formations that do some weird things with the water and hydraulics. Yeah, it can get skinny. It can. A of them. Yeah, and if they're not running water, you have to just about drive your truck into off the ramp. Yes. To get to the boat, I've the, got a picture of Ben's rig with our trailer totally off the ramp in the riverbed. Yeah. So that was because of the elk toe muscle. Is that right? Yes. Well, we got to protect. They, they had. They can only go so far because of that. Absolutely, well, they, they good now. Mm-hmm. That's that's why. I they're think good. I think they are good now. Mm-hmm. They're good. That's that's so why. That's that's your crash course, folks, in you know the level of difficulty with uh, the WNC fly fishing trail, and um, you know just just I think the biggest thing here is to take away is know your limits, and you know if 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 you come up and the tuck of CG isn't what you were hoping it would be, let's say it, it rained and it's muddy, or Duke Energy's put a surprise on us. Um, then check out some of these other places. I mean, there's 4,600, it says on this map. I don't know where they're all at, but it says 4,600 miles of trout water in this county. And they only cover on these 15 points a fraction of that. Yep. 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 So there, there's a lot of water to be fished here, folks. Come enjoy. Yep. Just look at a map. That's my story. <clears throat> I'm sticking to it. That's it. We'll have we'll have a more uh, mm-hmm. dynamic presentation up in the next video, but yeah. you know we're, we certainly were able to talk a little bit more about it more sure. in depth right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, good deal. 
Well, perfect. That was good. A lot of great, useful information there. Learned a little bit right there, too, about some, um, I didn't know the height of the waterfall and learned about now what the uh, Grand Canyon of the East Coast is. And the Yosemite of the East, everything. Yeah, yeah the Yosemite I, I did. Or that south. one I did, yeah, of, of the south, but uh, close enough. Real pretty in there for sure, though. But uh, most importantly, being safe, being prepared. Uh, first aid kit should always be a must anyway. Uh, way to, you know, filter water, stuff, just basics, yep. man. Just both folks be smart. So, so absolutely. So fishing wise right now, they're they're cutting some rivers down. Um the Nanahala, they've been cutting it off the lower. So now well, this is usually the time of year to start. They do looking. their maintenance on the January. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um they they've got the lake down low enough now. Yes. Because they're putting a new whatever it's called. It's like a plug they're putting in to help with it on Lake Nanahala, so mm. they won't be discharging as much right. other than to keep it at that level right. while they do that work. What it says on their webs- on the Duke website is I think it's if it reaches 83 feet, it will spill over. Yeah. It's set up to where it would just automatically yeah. spill. That That's the yeah, alert Castor on it. Castorf told me that today that it was, uh, he said it's probably close to 100 feet down. That's how oh, low wow. they've got Oh, wow. There you go. So, yeah, yeah, it, it's one of those things. And, and I had some folks that I suggested, hey, go fish it. You've got a chance. Yeah. They came back the next day and said, man, we we had a big one just break us yeah. off. So. so now this time yeah. of year, usually th- even through February, like it's a good sure. time to possibly go fish the lower Not March. Section. Yeah, not March. It'll be mm. closed in March. Yes. But but definitely hit that. The upper still fishing great. The tucks sure. fishing great, you know, yeah. depending on what the flows are. If I'm telling you, given, given yeah. this January, it's it's really good right now. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's January weather. It's supposed to be yeah. cold. And, hey, we're coming yeah. up on MLK weekend. You got an extra day? That's right. Come up here and fish, then go do a day of service. Yeah, Georgia Drifter sent me a picture before we went on the air of, of him and his friend over there. In the he was in the wooden drift boat and uh, had a nice nice plus size rainbow with plus with a size with uh, with Lame a bright uh, size rainbow with uh, with a uh, with a streamer in his mouth right there. So. Yeah, That's and right. he also sent me a picture of some uh, stoneflies hatching off that were pretty good size. Over yeah, there. yeah, nice. yeah. It's earlier today. Yeah, I'd say conditions every day. It's everybody's asking what flies to use. I mean, it's streamers, dries, or nymphs. So it's it, kind of come by, ask us, and we'll say today's a good day for this. Yeah, they all working. Yeah, yeah. Everything it just depends on what the conditions are each day. They all got a hook and they all got a point. I mean, today was bright and sunny and beautiful out. It was a nice day. Yeah, had the doors open for a Monday, little bit. Monday it was snowing all day. That's right. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. And then one day we had every every weather condition in the entire yeah. day. Man. Sunny, rain. Snow. There's still snow laying on the mountains too. Yeah, yeah. So, sure is. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Well, excellent. I think that about wraps it up right there. Yeah, I believe yeah, for, all but, hearts and minds are clear. Absolutely. Let's go eat. Yeah, folks, just be sure to uh, you know to uh, to give us a like, give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments, lift them in, list them in the comment section down below of the, of the video, and uh, also just shoot us an email. But uh, I think it's time to go get us some food, guys. Get the t- get the guitar out, Bobby. Sing us a tune. That's the one. Folks, that wraps up another exciting and informative episode of the Tuck Cast with a Splash of Bourbon presented by Tuckasegee Fly Shop. Remember, Tuckasegee Fly Shops has locations in Bryson City and Silver, North Carolina. Be sure to follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop for the latest information and instructional videos. Be sure to visit tuckflyshop.com for all things fly fishing in Western North Carolina and beyond. Remember, the online store is always open. If you have a question or comment, feel free to send them at info at tuckflyshop.com or just give us a call, 1-828-488-3333. For Coach Dell Diesel Collins, Bobby the Bearded Wonder Bennett, I'm Shannon Big Mess Messer. You folks take care and we'll catch you on the next episode. Catch a few fish out there, won't you?